Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to be doing some work on a 2018 Honda Grom. Now, today, today's going to be a big day. We're actually focused on making it go faster. And to do that, we're using a kit from Coso North. And we're going to punch this thing out to 170 cc's. And then we're also giving it a four valve head. We're also going to be installing a throttle body, a high flow air filter, and while we're down there, we're going to go ahead and replace the cam chain tensioner so it can deal with the added stress of that four valve head. So, this one is very special because when we're done hopping this thing up and making it handle and ride better, we're actually going to give it away. So if you would, check the link in the description below. It's going to carry you to a landing page. That's where you can enter to win. Now, take heart. If the contest is already over, why don't you do us a favor and go ahead and tell us what machine you'd like to see us hop up and give away next time. Now, as far as the special tools, this is an involved project. And I will call out any tools or special tools that will be required as we go through this process. So I'm going to go open up my whole toolbox and we're going to dive into this thing. So let's go. We start by taking off the seat and getting the shroud off. We're basically going to de-plastic the whole bike so we've got full access to all of the engine as well as the intake. Now will be a good time to go ahead and disconnect the negative on the battery. Let's go ahead and drop the oil out of this thing. And this is a 17 right here. Now I'm a big fan of synthetic, but when we go to refill this one, I'm actually going to go back with the standard because we're basically going to have to break in the engine from scratch and you don't want to use oil that's well quote quote too slippery and uh, otherwise your rings aren't going to seat properly. We don't want that. We've got all our plastics off, the oil's been drained and what we're going to focus on next is getting the air box taken off. Strange little setup they have here. I don't see how you can actually uh, get the air box to pull out without taking off the bracket. So. That's what I'm going to do. There she goes. Then drop the exhaust out of the way. Looks like there's just a bolt on either side here. One back here and of course one's going into the head. Then it should just drop right out. There we go. All of that for an exhaust system. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take care of our throttle cables. All right, go ahead and finish this up. Now let's get some of these wires unplugged. Go into the injector, throttle position sensor, and then the fuel in. Simple enough, just push in on that end and she pops right off. Just one more hose. Last bolt. All right, let's bring it around to top dead center, make life a little bit easier. Let's take out the spark plug. cam cover. It should just pop right off. There. Gentle persuasion. Get our access cover so we can rotate it over. Let's bring it around to our marks. Is this absolutely necessary when you're pulling down an engine? Well, no, it's just I prefer to do it this way. Oh, there she is. I've got my mark here, which is T, and then it's also coinciding with that, so that's on the compression stroke. We'll leave that attached and just take off the bracket. All right, this next part I find perplexing. Let's get under here, get this bolt, and there's going to be a ceiling washer with it. Now, 
Now, I know the book says you're supposed to hold this uh, cam gear still with a holder, but I'm going to do it the way I've always done it. Hold the crankshaft still and then pop it loose. I seriously doubt that was enough torque to do any damage. Now let's go ahead and remove our O2 sensor. What I'm hoping is I can take a box in wrench and run it all the way down over the wire. Well, an 18 did it. Not very convincingly. 17 should have gone. I don't know what this little malfunction was there. Now, let's go ahead and get our cap bolts off. These two right here. And we should be able to lift it off if it's going to clear that fender. That's the only thing I'm curious about. We'll do this in a crisscross pattern so it comes up evenly. There we go. I was afraid of that. Now because mine's in a stand, I'm going to need to remove the fender to get the, uh, the head to clear. Now, if you're doing this at home, just turn your handlebar. All right, see if it'll clear now. There we go. All right, before we can pull the cylinder, let's get this uh, little cam wheel out. Cam chain, that is. Now we should be able to remove it. And now let's go ahead and get a couple of paper towels, go ahead and fill in around the connector rod because I don't want anything foreign going into the engine. I'd hate to see a uh, circlip go inside there as I'm taking them out. With that safely packed, let's go ahead and get a uh, circlip out. That way we can get our piston off. There she is. Now we're almost done, but we need to pull the side cover and then we're going to remove the rotor and then actually that'll get us back to the cam chain tensioner, which we're going to upgrade. So these two panels need to come off. There we go. What I want to do right now, unplug this and put it to the side instead of just having it hang there. So we've got our cover off. Let's go ahead and get this um, secondary gear on the starter out of the way so it didn't just fall out. And now we're going to remove our flywheel slash stator. And to do that, you're going to need a special tool, which we actually offer. And the best one out there is actually made for Honda. Get it mounted up, then we can get this thing popped off. But I'm popped off like it was nothing. And the key is still there, so I think we'll just leave it in that space. Or leave it in place, rather. Now, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and install the uh, COSO chain tensioner. And we'll basically be replacing this lower pulley or drive gear, as well as this assembly. And we're going to be replacing that little cap on the end of the spring tensioner. Because uh, this one is actually a little bit harder material and it won't wear as fast as the OEM one. So let's go ahead and pull that spring assembly out. Next we're going to go for this bolt right here. It looks like a 12 millimeter. It is. We're going to actually reuse the bolt and then this little collar when we go install the new one. Now if we tighten this down and it actually doesn't have enough clearance, which doesn't allow this to move, you would add in the second washer with the kit to give you enough clearance. Now, if any of you have watched me build engines before, you know I'm a big fan of Loctite. Don't have to get carried away with it, just a little drop. Just gives me peace of mind, especially if it's on the inside. Now we're gonna tighten this down to 16 Newton meters, which is basically about 11.8 12 foot-pounds. There we go. Now let's get that lower 5 millimeter pulley out of the way and get it replaced. No bushing or anything on that. We take this one to 10 newton meters, which is about 7.5 foot-pounds. All right, now let's just slide it back up in there. Well, there's 
spring. And this retaining bolt. And now that bolt gets torqued to 22 Newton meters, which is roughly 16 foot pounds. Next, let's get our flywheel back on slash rotor washer bolts. We're going to put our holder back on. Now we're going to take this to 64 Newton meters. That's 47 foot pounds. All right, the surfaces look good and clean. I don't see any oil that needs to be wiped off. Go ahead and get our gasket in place over both of our dowels. Let's go ahead and get our gear back in. Let's get her line back up. Don't forget the spacer on the outside. Now we can get our stator bolted back up. There we go. Remember you had a couple of wire holders. Two on the front and then there's one in the back that actually has two holes in it. Now it's a low torque value on all these, around 7.5 to 8 foot pounds. That's all you would need. We'll snug them down first and then I'll go back and put the torque on them. But usually if you grab the wrench up high enough and just put a little bit of twist on it, that'll be enough. But if you don't trust yourself, use a torque wrench if you want to be sure. That way you know you will have it. Last, let's go ahead and get this base gasket off. Let's see if it's going to make it easy for me. You can tell this engine's brand new. Honda gaskets never come off that clean, ever. <laughs> So we've got it prepped and as far as we can take it right now. Before we go any further, we need to check the ring gap. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to use some guidelines set forth by Weissco because this is a forged piston and that is what Weissco specializes in. So I'm going to trust their judgment on this. What we need to do is use one of their charts and we're actually going to use a high performance street strip application to determine our top ring and second ring gap. So what you're going to do is take your bore, which in this case is going to be 60 millimeters, actually 60.98, and you're going to divide that by 25.4. You take that number and multiply it in the chart. In this case, it's 0 0.0045, and that's going to give you the ring gap in inches. Then for the second ring, you do the same multiplication times 0 0.0055. So now what we're going to do is take our top ring and that is signified by just having a single R stamped on it. We're going to place it into the cylinder and then we're going to square it up using the piston. And we're going to push it about down to where the wrist pin's even with the top of the cylinder. Now with that in place, we're going to get out our feeler gauges and see what fits. Now what we're aiming for is a clearance of 0 0.011. That's what we're after. So let's get out the 0 0.011 and see if it goes. I'm going to tell you that's not. No. So we need to determine, well, where is it? So let's drop down to 0 0.008 or 8 thousandths. Okay, it, goes in but ever so slightly if I move it at all either direction it binds up but if you put it in perpendicular it goes in and I'm betting the nine thousandths will not go it will but it basically drug through let's look at ten thousandths no so it's close but we need to file that down just a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use a ring gap filer. Now granted, we don't have to take off much, but if we did not take off any, as the engine heated up, those rings are going to get closer and closer together. And if they actually touch, well then it's going to start destroying your cylinder wall as well as the ring. So yes, I'm going to take the time to take off just a little bit on that edge with the filer. 
And when I'm done, I'll actually come back with a, just a hand file and take off the burrs that are created when we're removing material. So we're going to put this into our filer, and this does not take a lot of pressure to do. You just want to make very certain that you're filing it at a uh, perpendicular angle to the ring itself. So it's in place. Like I said, this will not take long for it to do. Now we're just going to take a fine file. And just take off that bottom edge, the front edge, and the back edge. Okay, that got it. Now let's pop it back in. Square it up. Go for that tin. Still a little tight, so let's do a little bit more. We were so close to the edge, I'm flipping the ring over since it's so small, and we'll go from this side. Now, we're still machining that same edge where the R was, I'm just doing it upside down. Take your time doing this, otherwise, if you go too far, you'll end up having to order another set of rings. But it is better to have a little bit too large of a gap than not enough. Now, let's go for that 10. Mm -hmm. 11, but just barely. And I'm good with it going to, a, to 12 thousandths. That would actually make me happier. Just barely, and it's actually grabbing as it, as it goes through. So I'm good with that. Now your second ring, it's a little bit more of a gap. We're actually looking for 13 thousandths with it. That's just my eyeballs, but um, that looks like it's pretty much dead on. Let's see. Yep, 13 goes. 14. So she's already in the ballpark. Let's see where it ends up. 15 goes, but it's starting to catch. So there's nothing we need to do to the second one. It is good to go. Then, use a little bit of contact cleaner to finish it off. The name of the game here is to keep things clean. And just for fun, look at the difference in between 125 cc's and 170. <laughs> pretty, pretty dramatic difference. Now since we're over here in a clean mode, let's go ahead and get a little bit of contact cleaner and clean up the cylinder. Just because it came out of the box doesn't mean it's uh, completely clean. Not bad, but still worth doing. Now let's talk about ring placement. The way I usually do this is to actually mark the top of the piston, where the top, the second, and then the oil rings are configured. And we're going to follow the guidelines set forth by COSO. Because I guarantee you, once I actually get the rings installed here on the table, by the time it makes it over to the machine and gets connected to the connector rod, they're going to move around. So this will make it easy for me to go there, line them up, and then get the cylinder installed. Now following the guidelines from COSO, we want our top ring to be right here. And the way I've got it oriented, you'll notice that this arrow is pointing toward me, which is actually toward the exhaust side. And that's also easy to identify because the intake valves are much larger than the exhaust. So your, your bigger dish cutouts are going to be on the intake side. So we've got our top one there, then we're going to put the second one roughly 45 degrees in that direction. Then you're going to look at your first oil ring. It's going to be here. Bottom oil ring will actually go here and then the expansion ring goes in line with your second ring. So that's going to be the configuration when we're done. So now we're going to put on our expansion ring first Remember I said it was going to end up over on this side. 
Now this one is not too tough and you can pretty much just spiral it on without damaging it like that. Now when you're doing this you want to look in there and make sure the ends are actually going into each other like this. If they manage to lap over then we're going to have an issue. I usually hold one end with one side then pull it back just to verify that they're not overlapped. There. Now let's do our bottom. These you want to be careful with and only open them up far enough to clear the piston. Then we need to hold the expansion ring still and bring the end over just a tick. There. Now we want our second end to end up right there. There it goes. Teeny tiny. There's one end, there's the other end, looking good. Now we can put our second on right here and you want to make sure that that R mark I was talking about, or in this case the RN, is facing up. Now for this one we just want to dab a little bit of oil and carry it around the surface of the ring. You don't have to glob it on, just wipe it all the way around. These you don't want to spiral on, you just want to pull it out evenly to clear the piston without gouging it and then drop it in. Same thing for the top. Make sure your R is facing up. Light coating of oil. and We want it to end up right here. There. Now when we go to put it together, it'll be facing in there like this. So we'll go ahead and put the opposite side circlip in and either want it facing up or down. You do not want either one of these ends to go into this relief right here which you would use to actually pull it out. So put it in the channel and then we're going to walk it in with our fingernails. Now if you need to use a little bit of coaxing with the screwdriver just be careful while you're doing it. Like that. She's facing right here. So we're good to go. Now we'll go ahead and prep our wrist pin to do that. We're going to get some assembly lube, make a mess of it, and go just a light coating on the inside where the wrist pin is going to go. A little bit on the pin itself. And now we can at least start it right there. Now let's go ahead and prep our cylinder and all we're going to do for it, make sure your hands are clean, is just take a little bit of oil and put it around the barrel. Now we're only putting a very light coat of oil in here because on first startup, yes, we need lubrication, but we also want the rings to actually cut into the cylinder and that's what these hone marks are for because if that doesn't happen, if it's too slippery in there, they're not going to cut in then they're not going to seal properly. So that's very important on startup. Well now that we've got our piston, our wrist pin, and our cylinder prepped, let's go get on that gasket and get this put together. So let's get that piston put on the end of the connector rod. Once again, make sure that arrow is pointing down to your exhaust. Now let's get our second circlip our snap ring installed. Close quarters in here. That was it. And now we can go ahead and remove our little towels. The surface is clean. Let's get our gasket on. You'll know if you've got this on right or wrong because this hole has to go down here with this oil inlet. Carry our chain over. Get her seated down. All right, now is where we need to look at our rings to make sure they haven't moved 
and then adjust them as necessary. That looks good. That looks good. Now, with all that in place, let's go ahead and get this new cylinder on there. The name of the game is patience here. Bring it up and just squeeze the rings as you're bringing it in. There you go. Grab our chain, go ahead and bring it through. Well, there she is. Next, let's go ahead and get our timing chain call it mid-wheel if you want to call it that. Get it back in place. Now you haven't already. We do need to pull our dowels out of the other cylinder slash head because we're going to be reusing those. Now get on our head gasket. You'll know you've got it on right because the tab will be going up plus it actually has larger holes for the dowels. The next part, let's go ahead and get the head mounted up and get it torqued down. So the surfaces are clean. We've got our gasket in place. Uh, let's lift our chain through. And down she goes. Now to get an accurate torque on the uh, anodized bolts or caps, we want to actually put a little layer of grease on the bottom of it. That way it has a, a smoother, less resistive surface to ride against so we would get a more accurate actual torque value as we're bringing it in. So I'm just applying a little layer of grease just around the bottom edge where it's going to come into contact with their brass washers. And we're actually going to torque these to the stock value. We're going to get these in place. And then we're going to torque each one to 18 foot pounds. That's it. Next, let's go ahead and get these two 8 millimeter headphones back in. Now, let's focus on our timing. Now we should be really close to top dead center. Now she's right on it. What we're going to do is use this just to hold it still. So we just want it to rest there. Let's grab our cam gear. Let's see if we can pop it in there. That's it. Now normally here's the part where I have to take it off several times and walk it back one or, you know, one or two teeth, but um, actually I hit it the first time. <laughs> I'll try not to let it go to my head. So now let's go ahead and get the, uh, the cam gear bolt back in before it decides to change its mind and jump off. <laughs> and now we're going to take this bolt to 20 foot-pounds. Now they make a holder to hold this gear but I'm just going to use the timing chain carefully and just hold the, uh, the crankshaft still. There we go. 20 pounds is not a lot, so I don't think I was stressing the timing chain too much by doing it that way. Now that allowed the crankshaft to turn just a tick. We want to bring it back up to top dead center so we can adjust the valves. What we're looking for here is four thousandths on the intake side and then seven thousandths on the exhaust. That's in inches. Make this process a little bit easier. We're using a little tool from Motion Pro for doing valve adjustments. But on this particular engine, your actual wrench that tightens down the lock nut is a little too big, so we're gonna have to do it without it. We'll just get a eight millimeter and just hold that in place. What we're gonna do is bring it down 
until it grabs it, then ever so slightly back it off. Do you just want to feel a little bit of stiction where you can feel it tugging against it just a little, but it still allows you to move it in and out. So right there, we're going to hold the adjuster still and then use our little wrench to tighten it down. Now, just hit the other side. Right there. Lock it in place. And for the exhaust, we're looking for seven thousandths in inches. But same procedure. Now we go and get those valve covers on. All right, these have the little arrow pointing up, so might want to pay attention to that. Let's get our cam cover on. I thought it was going to look funny black, but actually it kind of looks okay. Now that we're finished with the timing, let's go ahead and get our inspection caps back on. Just make sure you're not missing the O-rings. There's a couple of things we need to transfer over. One. It's this temp sensor. Bring a harness down. Plug that back in. Then get this bracket back on. Just to make sure that everything's playing nicely together, we want to rotate it over just a couple of times and make sure there's no interference anywhere. I mean, I feel confident that everything's good, but this will definitely tell us. There's one. And there's two. Yep, yep. Already trying to build some compression in there. <laughs> so we're good to go. Let's get this inspection plug back in place. All right, guys, the next step in this process, as you can tell, is the intake. And I've got everything laid out, but guess what? I'm going to make you wait until the next video. So if you want to follow along on this project, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when we do send out the next video. And listen, if the contest is still going on, why don't you check that link in the description below and you can enter for a chance to win this unit when I'm done with it. Now, don't, don't get upset if the contest is over. Do us a favor, leave a comment in the section below and tell us what machine you'd like to see me hop up and then give away in the next sweepstakes. Well, listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.